In this video, I want to show you how to knit a blanket design I am naming Wren. This blanket features a large amount of stockinette stitch with a few little stitches that create a really cute little repeating pattern just to break up that stockinette stitch. Wren is only a 10 row repeat, so it's a really nice rhythmic repeat that you work to. Nothing too complicated for the beginners amongst you. And for the more experienced knitters, it's something that's really nice and simple that you can knit in the evening and not have to concentrate on too much. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you the instructions that you need to produce a blanket 60 centimetres wide and 80 centimetres long. You can adjust that size really easily by using the pattern multiple that I state. But if you want to make a blanket the same size as mine, you're going to need to cast on a total of 135 stitches. And then you're going to want to work a total of 22 of these repeats. If you want to use different yarn or work a different size blanket, then if you head to the written pattern that gives you all the information that you need about adjusting the size of this blanket. To knit a blanket like mine you are going to need 400 grams of double knit yarn. For those of you outside the UK that is light worsted weight or three weight yarn. You are also going to need some four millimeter circular needles. Straight needles are not going to be long enough to accommodate your stitches so you do need to use circular needles for these blankets. In terms of length I like to use anything between 100 to 150 centimeters it, I really just grab the needles that I have closest to me but if you buy something that is between 100 and 150 centimeters in length then that will be perfect. You are also going to need two stitch markers these are to mark where your garter stitch side borders begin and end and it really just helps make knitting this middle pattern easier because it defines where your border starts and ends. Last but not least you are also going to need a tapestry needle and some embroidery scissors to sort out those ends when you have finished your blanket. So without Without further ado, grab some yarn and let's get knitting. Even though this blanket has a built-in border, I still like to give you the pattern multiple for your middle textured panel separately to the stitches that you cast on for your border. This just means if you want to add a contrasting border and don't want to have an integral border, you can still use that pattern multiple. So the pattern multiple for this particular blanket for that middle textured panel is eight plus five. So you are going to cast on a multiple of eight stitches and then add five stitches on once you've done that. Then you need to add an additional 18 stitches for your border. That is nine stitches for either edge of your border. The total I cast on for my blanket that's 60 centimeters wide is 135. So if you want to make a blanket that's identical to mine, that's how many stitches that you will need to cast on. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to cast on a very small sample of 47 stitches, but you can cast on as many or as few stitches as you want for your particular blanket. I like to use the long tail cast on method, but you don't have to use that if you've got a method that you prefer. And just to recap, if you're making a blanket that's identical to mine, you want to cast on 135 stitches, and that includes your stitches for your side borders. So this blanket is knitted from bottom to top. So the first part of our blanket that we need to tackle is that bottom garter stitch edging. It's really nice and simple. It consists of 15 rows worked in exactly the same way. I'll walk you through the first row and then I'll leave you to get on with the subsequent 14 rows. So to start your blanket, you are going to knit all the way across your work until you have just one stitch left to work on your left hand needle. So all of these stitches until that final stitch are just knit stitches. The final stitch of each row is our selvage stitch and we work this slightly differently so that we get a really nice neat edge up the long edges of our blanket. So to work this final stitch we are not going to knit it, we're going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. I'm a continental knitter so the first thing that I do is pop the working yarn to the front and I just hold that on my needle rather than lifting it all the way to the front of my work. You want it to come round in front of your needle but you can pop the yarn to the front of your work however you prefer. You're going to pop your working yarn to the front of your work like this and then you're going to grab your right hand needle and you're going to slide it into that final stitch from right to left not from left to right. And once you've slid it onto your right hand needle and it's firmly on, you can take that left hand needle out. And then the last thing that you need to do is to make sure that this working yarn here is at the front of your work, because if you don't, you will accidentally create a new stitch. 
So I'll leave you now to work 14 more rows exactly like that. And once you have worked your total of 15 rows, I'll be back to show you how to start knitting that middle textured panel. At the end of your 15th row, when you turn your work, you should have the smooth side of your cast on facing you and you should have eight garter ridges not including this smooth cast on. The first time we work row one of this repeat, we're going to do a little bit of setup work to add our stitch markers to mark where our side borders are. But every other time that you work row one, you are just going to slip those markers rather than placing them. Row one and every odd numbered row is a right side row. So that means that the right side of your work is going to be facing you as you knit. You want to start row one by knitting the first nine stitches. Then you want to grab the first of your two stitch markers and pop it onto your right hand needle and this will mark the border on this edge of your blanket. Then you want to knit across until you have nine stitches left to work on your left hand needle. So that's nine stitches before the end of the row. Just like at the other edge of our blanket, when you have nine stitches left to work, you're going to grab your second stitch marker and pop it onto your right hand needle to mark the garter stitch border on the other edge of your blanket. Then you want to carry on and knit the next eight stitches. Just like with our bottom garter stitch border, for the final stitch of each row, you are going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. And that completes row one. Row two and every even numbered row is a wrong side row, so the wrong side of your blanket will be facing you. You want to start row two by knitting the nine stitches that take you to your first stitch marker. Slip that stitch marker over and then you are going to purl your way across until you hit your second stitch marker. So the stitches in between the two stitch markers on this row are all purl stitches. Once you reach your second marker, you're going to slip the marker from your left needle to your right needle and carry on and knit the next eight stitches. Finish your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row three is really nice and easy. You just want to knit your way across all the way to the final stitch. Slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. And as you reach each of your two stitch markers, you are just going to slip them over from your left needle to your right needle. Row four is a repeat of row two. So you are going to knit the nine stitches that take you to your stitch marker. Slip that stitch marker over and then purl your way across to your second stitch marker. Slip that second marker over when you reach it and then carry on and knit eight more stitches. That should leave you with one stitch left to work and you're going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. Row five, like row three, is nice and easy. You're just going to knit your way across, slip those markers as you come to them and slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row six is the same as rows two and four. So you are going to knit the nine stitches that take you to your stitch marker. Slip that stitch marker over from your left needle to your right needle and then you want to purl your way across until you hit your second stitch marker. Slip that second marker over and then knit eight stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row seven is just like our other odd numbered rows so far. You are just going to knit every single stitch with the exception of that final stitch. You're going to slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front, and then don't forget to slip your stitch markers over as you come across them. Rows eight, nine, and 10 are the ones that form those little bits of texture on the right side of our work. And you start row eight still by knitting the nine stitches before your stitch marker.
slip the first marker over when you come to it and then you want to start the next section by purling six stitches. Next you're going to knit one stitch and then you're going to work across until you have six stitches left before this second stitch marker and we're going to work the following. You are going to purl seven. And then knit one. And that's the eight stitch repeat that you're going to work across your row until six stitches before your marker. And that should come, if you've counted correctly, after a knit one. So you're going to purl seven and knit one all the way across until you have just six stitches left before your second stitch marker. These six stitches that are left before your marker, you are going to purl all six of them. Slip your marker over and knit eight stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row nine starts with knitting the nine stitches before your stitch marker. Slip the marker over and knit five more stitches. That should take you to one stitch before your knit stitch from the previous row. So when you look at your stitches, you should have one stitch here and then in the row below, you've got a purl bump. And now we're going to work an eight stitch repeat all the way until we hit that second marker. So you are going to work purl one knit one, purl one, and then knit five. That's purl one, knit one, purl one, and knit five. And you should hit your second stitch marker at the end of a knit five. Slip your second marker over, and then knit eight stitches. To finish the row, you're going to slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 10 is the final row of our repeat and it is exactly the same as row 8. So you're going to start by knitting the 9 stitches that take you to your first stitch marker. Slip that first stitch marker over. And then you're going to purl 6 stitches. Knit the next stitch and then your eight stitch repeat is worked all the way across until six stitches before that second marker and your eight stitch repeat is as follows. You are going to purl seven stitches. and then knit one stitch. And you repeat those eight stitches all the way until you have six stitches left to work before this second marker. So that's purl seven and knit one. If you've counted your stitches correctly, your six stitches remaining should come after one of your knit one stitches. And then the six stitches that are left before your marker, you are just going to purl. Slip your second marker over and then knit eight stitches. Finish the row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. 
These 10 rows form the building blocks of your blanket and it is really simple once you hit row 10, you go back to row 1 and repeat these sets of 10 rows for as many times as you need to build the length of blanket that you want. If you're knitting a blanket the same as mine, I repeated these 10 rows a total of 22 times. So if you are working a blanket after this first set, you would repeat them 21 more times. You can count how many repeats you've done by counting these little motifs because these motifs represent one set of 10 rows. Once you have worked your repeats as many times as you want, if you're not making the same size blanket as me, that is about six seven centimeters shorter than you want your overall length to be you are going to want to repeat rows one to seven once more before you start your edge so you don't work rows eight nine and ten on your very last repeat so for me that was 22 repeats and then one more set of rows one to seven and once you've done that you will be ready to start your top garter stitch border what working the extra seven rows does is give you symmetry top and bottom so you get the same spacing between your border and your first motif as you do between your last motif and your top border. So that's what working those seven rows does. Once we've done that we are ready to start our garter stitch border on the top edge and that is worked in the same way as our bottom edge. You are going to work 15 rows in exactly the same way. So you are going to knit every single stitch all the way across. When you come to your stitch markers on this row, you can remove them because we don't need to mark those side borders anymore. And you're going to knit across until you have one stitch left to work on your left hand needle. When you get to this final stitch, just like we have been doing for the entirety of this blanket, you are going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. So that's row one of 15 and you will want to go away and work 14 more rows. After row 15, you should have the right side of your work facing you when you're just about to start your next row like I have here. And you should be able to count eight garter ridges up on your top border. Once you're at that stage, the only thing left to do is to cast off. So if you go away and knit an additional 14 rows and then come back and I will walk you through how we cast this blanket off. After your 15th row, you should be left with eight garter ridges that match the eight garter ridges that you have at the bottom of your blanket. And you should have the right side of your work facing you ready to start your next row. Now, the last row we work in any knitted project is the cast off. It's the bit that gets it from a piece of work that's in progress on your needles to a finished piece of work that is no longer on your needles and is ready to use. For my blankets, I like to use a really basic knitted cast off. I'm going to walk you through the first few stitches, but if you need a more in-depth tutorial, then I have a separate video that you can watch that goes through things in really slow, beginner-friendly steps. To start your knitted cast off, you want to knit two stitches. Try not to knit these too tightly because if you do, your cast off edge will pull tight and your blanket won't lay flat. Once you've knitted two stitches, you are going to grab the first of the two stitches that you knitted with your left hand needle. And then you want to lift that stitch up and over the first stitch and off your needles. You might find it handy just to hold that stitch with your finger so that it doesn't also slip off your needles. And you can see that you've gone from two stitches on this right hand needle to one stitch. Then you are going to knit one more stitch so that you've got two on this right hand needle. And then you're going to repeat the process of lifting that first stitch over the second stitch and taking it back down from two stitches to one stitch. And you repeat that all the way along your row until you have no stitches left on your left hand needle and you have just one stitch left here on your right hand needle. Once you're down to this final stitch, you can break your yarn. You want to leave yourself a nice long tail because you're going to need to sew the end in once you're done. And then just to give this stitch an extra little bit of security, what I do is I pull up and make the stitch bigger and then I get rid of my needles. We don't need those anymore. And then what I do just to finish off is I put my finger and thumb through the larger stitch, grab the tail, pull it all the way through and then I pull to tighten and then once I sew my ends in on the reverse of the blanket, you can't even see that stitch there. 
before I go, let's cover a few final bits and bobs that I often get asked about my blankets. Can you knit this in any weight yarn? Yes, absolutely. You're just going to need to use that pattern multiple and adjust the amount of stitches that you cast on to accommodate the fact that you are using thicker or thinner yarn. And don't forget to use the right size needles for the yarn that you choose. I always get asked, is this pattern reversible? And with a blanket like this that has a large amount of stockinette stitch, it's never going to be reversible. So if you look at the reverse of the blanket, you have a little bit of pattern, but the reverse stockinette is what is covering the majority of the blanket so it's not ugly it's not untidy it just doesn't look the same as the front and last but not least for those of you that prefer to have written instructions to follow along to rather than coming back to the video all the time I have a free written pattern on my blog that you can use and it also has a link to a paid pdf if you want to avoid having adverts when you are looking at the pattern that's all from me for today and I'll be back with another blanket again really soon